Welcome to my homework rewards. Today we're going to solve a truss problem. We have a truss here with some external forces, P1 and P2. And we're going to solve for the forces in each of these members. And the reason why I would do this is perhaps um, one of the members can only handle a certain amount of stress. So we need to know the, the force that the member is experiencing to make sure that it doesn't fail. This is question 5-8 or 9 from Statics and Mechanics of Materials, second edition by Hibbler. The only difference between question 8 and 9 are external forces P1 and P2. So our game plan for solving this problem is we're going to use the method of joints. So that means that we're going to solve at each one of these joints one by one. You could use method of sections, but since we need to find the forces in every one of the members, um, this, this is just a reasonable approach. Now, usually I would suggest drawing a free body diagram of the external forces on the whole object. So we would have external forces at the supports E and A in the X and Y directions. But you can actually solve this problem without doing so. Um, the full solution is available for download on myhomeworkrewards.ca. And I've also included an alternative solution where I start solving for some of these external forces and use them to help solve for the forces in the members. Pause the video right now and take a guess at which joint will start uh, this problem. So A, B, C, D or E. We're going to start solving this problem at joint C. And the reason why is we have two unknown forces over here and one known force, P2. But P2 is in the y direction and only force CB has a y component, which means they must equal each other, they must balance equal and opposite direction. So that'll allow us to solve for CB, and then we can get the X component, and the only X other force acting on the X direction is CD. So that means that we can solve for all the forces at joint C with the information that we know. So we'll start by drawing a free body diagram. We'll say joint C. We have P2 going downwards. We have force CD, and we're just going to guess that it goes in the positive direction. If we're wrong, we will analytically get a negative sign, and that just means to point it the other direction. And force CB, we're going to assume goes this way. So there are three forces here. One of them is known, P2, and we're going to write out the sum of forces in the x and y direction. So we will start with the y direction. We have a positive FCB, but we just want the y component, which is going to be sine of 30 degrees, and we're going to subtract P2, and this is going to equal zero. There are no other forces acting in the y direction. We know P2, so rearranging for CB gives P2 divided by sine 30. P2 was 4. Sine 30 and plugging this in gives us 8. So now we've solved for force FCB. Next, we're going to write out the forces in the X direction. Pause the video and give this a shot yourself. In the x direction, we have positive FCD, and we have negative FCB, but we just want the x component, which will be cos 30, and this whole thing equals 0. We already know what FCB is. We're trying to solve for FCD. So rearranging gives FCD equals FCB 
cos 30, which is 8 cos 30, which is 6.9. So something else that we'll do is we'll identify whether or not the forces are acting in, or the, the members are in tension or compression. So we can start with force CD. Force CD was positive, we guessed correctly, which means that if at the joint there is a force going in this direction, that means the member is actually going the opposite direction which means the member is in compression. So you can think of this as if member CD is in compression, it has this internal sort of force and it needs to be balanced by forces at C and then at D, it will go the opposite direction. We'll clean this up and say that this is in a compression. We we'll use the same logic for FCB. FCB has a force going this way at joint C, which means the member must be going like this, which means it's going in tension. So that's all we can do at force or at joint C. We can move on to joint D. So at joint D, we'll draw out a free body diagram. We have force P1, which is known, force DB, which is unknown. Now force DC is actually gonna go the opposite way over here. Again, that's because if this member is in compression, then to keep it in equilibrium, force at C needs to pull it this way and the force at D needs to pull it the other way. And finally, we have force DE, which we will assume goes in the positive direction then we can confirm analytically. So now we'll write out the forces in the X and Y direction. The sum of the forces in the Y direction is equal to positive FDB minus P1. And that has to equal zero. We know P1, so FDB is equal to P1, which is equal to And now, again, because the force is pointing upwards, that must mean that the member is in tension. You can pause the video and try to write out the forces in the X direction. In the X direction, we have positive FDE and negative FDC. All of that is going to equal zero. We already know what FDC is, so we can rearrange. FDE is equal to FDC, which is 6.9. So force DE was moving, uh, was in the positive direction, meaning that the member must be in compression. Finally, we will write out the forces at joint B. I'll scroll up so you can take a look. So joint B has a lot of members acting on it. So let's draw out the free body diagram. FBD is going to go downwards. 
Again, it's the opposite of what was happening at D. F, B, C will go this way. F, B, E will come this way. And we'll just guess that F, B, A goes upwards. So here, recall that we are trying to solve for F, B, A and F, B, E. Let's start by writing out the sum of forces in the y direction. Here we have positive BA, but we just want the Y component, so we'll take the sine of 30. And the reason being, if we scroll back over here, this angle is 30 degrees, which means along this bar, if we draw a line parallel to this one down here, that means this is also going to be 30 degrees. Next we have positive BE, FBE, sine 30, because we just want the y direction. We want to subtract bc and you guessed it sine 30 for the y component and also subtract f b d this whole thing is going to equal zero and we can sort of simplify it if we divide every term by sine 30 we'll get f b a plus f b e minus f b c minus FBD, we'll have to divide this one by sine 30, is equal to zero. So recall that we're trying to solve for force BA and BE. So two unknowns in this equation, we will need another one. So we will write out the sum of the forces in the X direction. So all three of these forces that were at an angle will also have an x component. So for BA, we'll have negative FBA and cos 30 this time for the x component. We have positive FBE cos 30. We also have positive FBC cos 30. And that's it because F bd was only in the y direction this equals zero and we'll do the same thing where if we multiply or divide everything by cos 30 we'll end up with negative fba positive fbe and positive fbc equals zero so now we can add these two equations. This was the y and x respectively. You'll notice here that FBA is positive and here is negative. So if we add these two equations, this will cancel out. FBE is positive in both, which means it'll stay there, which is good. That means we can solve for it. So adding these two equations gives us 2 FBE these ones cancelled out and these also cancel out so that's convenient minus FBD over sine 30 equals 0 now we just have one unknown F, B, E is equal to one half times F, B, D was four over sine 30 
and this will give us four kilonewtons. FBE was pulling on the force. We said it was going in the positive direction, which means the member must be in compression. Now we can go back to this equation right here. We know what FBE is, so we can solve for FBA. And that gives us FBA is equal to FBC plus FBE. And this is just 8 plus 4, which equals 12. These are all kilonewtons. And for FBA, we said it was going in the direction of the member, which means the member itself must be in tension. So there you have it. As a recap, we used method of joints to solve for each force in the member of this truss. We started at joint C because we knew one of the forces in the y direction and there was only one other unknown force that had a y component. Going from there, we went one by one and solved for each of the forces. We also identified whether or not a member was in tension or compression. So as a reminder, for, force, uh, for member BA, we said at B, that the force was positive, or going in this direction, positive in the y, negative in the x. That means that the member must be in tension. If the member is in tension, then the force at B has to counteract it, and the force at A would also have to counteract it. So that gives us an idea of what the reaction forces at A would look like as well. As I mentioned, there's an alternative solution posted on the free download on myhomeworkrewards.ca. In this solution, I solved for one of the reaction forces to help solve for this force over here, FBA. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can sign up at My Homework Rewards for free and practice other statics questions like this one here. The adaptive learning system automatically tailors the questions such that you're able to maximize your performance by solving the questions that are best suited for you. Thanks for watching.